Hey guys, I'm back and I'm here. It's June 1st. It's Caribbean month. Come on y'all, we gotta read some Caribbean books. So this is my loose TBR because I never know what I'm gonna read this month. I have a lot of trouble with deciding what I wanna read because there's so many good books on my bookshelves that are Caribbean that I have not read. <clears throat> so this is what I've done. I've picked a few here. I think there's about ooh, six books, seven. And these are what I'm going to be choosing from. So I'm going to keep that simple so I don't have to go back to my shelf going, oh my God, what do I want to read? No, I've got the six books here. This is what I'm going to choose from this month. Now, how many will I read? Only the end of June will tell you that. So we're going to see. So let's just get started. The first book on my list is this one right here, August Town by Kai Miller. Now, I purchased this book when it came out. I think it was in 2016. Yes. And I still haven't read it yet. Like, girl, what is wrong with me? Anyway, so I'm going to read this one, hopefully uh, this month, because it has been a long time on my Caribbean list. It discusses the Rastafarian community in Jamaica. And as you can see, there's a young boy on the cover. We're going to see. I haven't heard a bad thing about this book, nor about anything that Kai Miller has written. Like, so he's like supposed to be fantastic. So it would be wonderful if I could just get this one done. August Town. The next book I have on my list is this one, which is called The House of Plain Truth by Donna Hemmons. Okay, so this one is the same author of Tea by the Sea, which I have not read. But this one is taking place as well in Jamaica. It says, when Perlene receives grave news about her ailing father, she abruptly leaves Brooklyn for her childhood home in Jamaica. But Perlene isn't prepared for a tense reunion with her sisters or for her father's uh, startling deathbed wish that she repair their long broken family legacy and find the sister and two brothers no one has seen in more than 50 years. Yeah. So love me some family drama. So this looks like it's going to be something that should be really, really interesting. I absolutely love the cover. I mean, if the cover has any indication about how good a book is, this one should be fantastic. Okay. And then here she is right here. Uh, Donna Hemings. Next on my list, I have Let Me Liberate You by Andy Davis. Now, this is uh, a debut author that contacted me and asked if I would be interested in reading her book. And I said, sure, why not? This one is taking place in Barbados. And I'm hoping from the way the cover looks that it's not going to be heavy, that I hope it's going to be like a little humorous and light, but I'm not sure. So it says, dark, lanky, and bald, New York race photographer, Saber Cumberbatch, can't tell if she's highly talented or just highly Instagrammable. Up to here with art critics and their gaseous praise, Saber returns to Barbados, her childhood island home, to water her roots. She needs to quell self-doubt by doing something, anything profoundly important. Welcoming her with bejeweled open arms is her aunt Aggie, a fearsome high society attorney eager to show off her famous American niece. When Sabre witnesses Aggie unleash her wrath on the household staff over a minor mistake, Sabre finds her cause. During an interview for a puff piece about art, Sabre goes off script and takes a righteous stand against the tyranny of the ruling class, starting with Aggie. So this book is actually coming out July 9th. So even if I don't get to it this month, I will still be able to get to it the beginning of July and get it finished, you know, before it's about to be released. So July 9th, Let Me Liberate You by Andy Davis. Okay, the next book on my list is An Untamed State by Roxane Gay. <sighs> oh, 
Okay. Um, everybody pretty much knows what this book is about. And I have been like, this is literally the only book that I have not read by Raxa Gay. This one and her newest one called Opinions, I have not read that yet. But everything else I have read. And I just, I'm afraid to pick this book up because I'm afraid it's going to terrify the hell out of me. And that's just because I remember when it came out, how much people were saying how much it was terrifying to read. And, you know, Roxanne Gay is into terrifying, uh, super sad, uh, super depressing. So you really got to get your mind right. Okay. And I don't know if I'm going to have my mind right, but I would like to really try to attempt to get this one finally done and to stop shying away from this one. So it's an untamed state. It says, in this debut novel, she delivers a powerful, unflinching story of a Haitian American woman kidnapped for ransom, the privilege that made her a target and the strength she must draw on to survive. Yeah. Pray for me, people. Pray for me. You can kind of see a theme. A lot of Haitian books in here. Yeah, I'm feeling the Haitians this, this, this month. Okay, so the next one I have on my list is this one right here, which is Hungry Ghost. And this is by Kevin Gerard Ho Hoshin, I think, or Hosin. I'm not sure about the pronunciation of his last name. But my goodness, this cover is just absolutely beautiful. So this one came out, I think it was either last year. I think it was last year it came out. No, the year before last, 2022. And I picked it up and still haven't read it. So this is one that's been staring me down hard these days. So it says, 1940s rural Trinidad. On a hill overlooking Bell Village sits the Shangor Farm, where Dalton and Marley Shangor live in luxury, unrecognizable to those who reside in the farm's shadow. Down below by the river is the barrack, a ramshackle building of wood and tin divided into rooms occupied by whole families. Among these families are the Sarups, Hans and Shweta, and their son Krishna, whose lives are shaped by backbreaking work, poverty, and devotion to faith. When Dalton Shongor goes missing and Marley's safety is compromised, Farmhand Hans is offered a generous payment to move to the farm as watchman. It's a proposition he can't refuse, but as the mystery of Dalton's disappearance unfolds, their lives become dangerously entwined and the small community altered forever. So, yeah, I can't wait for this one. This is Trinidad. And we also have another Haitian novel here. We have Village Weavers by Miriam J. Chancy. And this is her newest novel that has come out. And her first one was Wood Storm with Thunder. Uh, it's also, uh, that was one of the, that was her debut that got her, you know, very popular. But I decided to go with this one first. So it says... In 1940s Port-au-Prince, Gerti and Cici become fast childhood friends despite being on opposite ends of the social and economic ladder. As young girls, they build their unlikely friendship until a deathbed revelation ripples through their families and tears them apart. After François Duvalier's rule, Turns deadly in the 1950s, C.C. moves to Paris while Gertie marries into a wealthy Dominican family. Across decades and continents, through personal successes and failures, they are parted and reunited slowly, learning the truth of their singular relationship. Finally, six decades later, with both women in the United States, a sudden phone call brings them together once more to reckon with and forgive the past. So, yeah, this has all the things I love, you know, family story. It's Haiti. Yeah, this is this is going to be good. I mean, oh, Jesus, I just want to read everything. 
Anyway, all right. The last book on my list is the Read So Lit Read Along book. Uh, and that was voted on by the group. And it is How to Make Love to a Negro by Danny Laferriere. And he is also Haitian. This book, it says, description is very uh, interesting. Racial and sexual politics collide in this cult classic that launched Laferriere as one of North America's finest literary provocateurs. Brilliant and tense, Danny Laferriere's first novel, How to Make Love to a Negro Without Getting Tired, is as fresh and relevant today as when it was first published in 1985. With raunchy humor and a working class intellectualism, Laferriere's narrator wanders the slums of Montréal, has sex with white women, and writes a book to save his life. With this novel, La Ferrière began a series of internationally acclaimed social and political novels about the love of the world and the world of sex, including Heading South and I Am a Japanese Writer. So this one right here is what we're going to be reading in the Read So Lit book club and another Haitian novel. So as you can see here, the theme is around Haiti. I just feel like Haiti is one of those country where when we have Caribbean month, the, Haiti is the, is the country I feel like is not really read to the same level as some of the other countries in the Caribbean. And I feel like we need to change that because the Haitian writers are really very, very good. And these are just only a few. I mean, like one of my favorite Haitian writers is Edwige Dantica. So if you haven't read her, definitely go and check her out. But this is the list that I will be choosing from this month. So stay tuned for more of what I'll be reading. You'll, I mean, I'll see... What I'll try to do is, depending on how bad my schedule is for work, this is the end of the school year, but if I can, whatever I read from this list, I will definitely try to come on and do a review so that you can kind of see, you know, what I felt like reading some of these books. So that's all I have for you today. Comment below. Let me know what you're reading for Caribbean. There's also going to be Caribbean, and I'm waiting for to hear about what Karen and PETA have chosen as their read-along books, so I would love to join in with them. I don't know exactly what they'll be reading, but look out for that on their channels. You can go to Run Right, Karen Run Right Reads and PETA at Comfy Cozy Up, and you can hear what they're going to be reading this month for their group read. So that's it, and I'll see you really soon. Have a great Caribbean month. Bye. <music>